Well, the purpose of a collection system is to collect and convey the wastewater from homes and industry at a flow rate greater than two feet per second to a wastewater treatment plant. So basically what we're saying here is we want the system to be designed so that flow is at least two feet per second and it's going to collect water from both residences and commercial and industrial customers. And here we have a picture that shows industry contributing to the wastewater and then we also have residences that continue or contribute to the wastewater and they combine uh, to provide all the flow that goes to the headworks of the wastewater treatment plant. Now something else I want to point out on this picture are those uh, lighter blue lines and those are showing uh, coming from the industrial and from the streets. That's the stormwater system so that's a separate system from the sanitary sewer. So we've got a, a split system here. And then also over on the far right of the screen, the darker blue, um, you can see there's a combined sewer system. And that's a system in which both the sanitary sewer and the stormwater flows into the same uh, conduit. And if there's an overflow of capacity, the excess then bypasses the wastewater treatment plant and goes on into the river. Well, now we're going to talk about the method of conveying this wastewater. And what we're really talking about is what force is used to move the wastewater from the point of collection to the wastewater treatment plant. And there's three main types that we'll look at, and that's gravity. So gravity is a force that can move the water. We also have low pressure systems where we use pumps to pressurize the force main to move the water. And then we also have vacuum systems. So we're going to briefly take a look at each of these types of systems and just the major components for each. Well here we have a gravity system and this is just your, your typical system where you've got residences uh, on a slightly sloping terrain. And you can see as we start the wastewater flow it gets to a point to where we need to use a lift station to lift it to a higher elevation and then on to the sewer treatment plant. So what's happening here is the depth of the trench is getting too deep so we need to raise that back up uh, to a higher elevation so that the trenches don't need to be so deep. I'm going to insert a, a red line here. That would be the depth that the sewer system would have to maintain in order to you know, continue with gravity without a lift station um, and that house on the hill uh, in order to get to it, you'd have a very, very deep uh, trench just for the service connection. So in this case, we're using gravity to allow the flow to go to the wastewater treatment plant, but we've also used a lift station to assist with this gravity system. The next system is a low pressure system. So looking at that same terrain, rather than having the lift station, we just put the trenches uh, at a constant depth below um, the surface level and we use pumps to pressurize the system so that the flow just uh, continues due to pressure. And then the last system is the vacuum system. And in the vacuum system, uh, a couple things to point out. We have a vacuum station which, require, or which provides the low pressure that's going to provide the, the motive force to draw the wastewater in one direction. And then also near the residence we have the vacuum interface unit. And what this does is that interfaces between the gravity portion of the building sewer and the vacuum system on the municipal side. So again in this case the vacuum station provides the force uh, that's drawing the wastewater to the wastewater treatment plant. Well now we're going to talk about the different types of waste that's conveyed in the system and that dictates what the system is called. And we have three basic types of systems. We have the sanitary sewer system, a storm water system, and then we have a combined system which combines both the sanitary and the storm water systems. 
Well, in the sanitary sewer system, you can see that we have it split out from any storm drain. So the only thing that goes in the sanitary sewer system is sanitary waste. So that would be human waste uh, as, as an example. So again, the sanitary sewer system, if that's all it is, we don't want any water in it other than sanitary waste. And we'll talk about inflow and infiltration a little bit later. So the sanitary system only has sanitary waste in it. Now the stormwater system collects water from street runoff, surface runoff, uh, from rain events. And the storm water system sends all of its flow just directly to a, a natural waterway or a natural water course and does not receive any treatment at all. So the difference between the sanitary uh, system and the stormwater system is the sanitary system is being is conveying the wastewater to be treated at the wastewater treatment plant is where the stormwater system is just directing all of the surface runoff to a natural waterway. Now in the case of a combined system we have a situation where you've got your household uh, waste going into this pipe. You also have roof drains or surface runoff going into the common pipe. And you have storm drains or uh, road runoff going into the pipe. And as that fills the pipe up, it will overflow into the natural waterway. So under normal conditions, as long as this pipe is not overloaded or full, the water both the runoff and the sanitary waste will run to the water treatment or the wastewater treatment plant. But when it reaches full capacity, that's when the overflow will go into uh, the natural waterway and it'll be a combination of the surface runoff and the sanitary waste that goes into that waterway.